Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Stephen. It is February 6th. It's about, oh, let's see, I have a watch on. 8.47 in the morning. My report time for work is at 9.28, so I've got to scoot my butt into the airport. I'm hoping to be able to get a coffee at least, maybe some food, because I have not eaten this morning. Um, I am out of the habit of getting ready for a morning uh, showtime. Uh, usually my showtimes are in the late evening, so having a morning show is very weird for me. And I'm also out of the habit of like having my bag ready, my device charged, because I've been off work for less than, it's been less than two weeks, but more than a week and a half. I don't know the exact number of days, but um, I had a week of vacation. I knew that something was gonna happen with my car. I wasn't sure how much money that would entail. So I didn't plan anything for my vacation week, which is just fine. I got what I really needed, which is uh, like more than a week of sleeping as long as I wanted to, taking naps if I wanted to, going out thrifting. I really didn't find a lot this this uh, recently. I did list a good sized handful of nice things, some nice things, uh, and um, hung out with the cats and just had a peaceful, relaxing every day. It was gorgeous. It was kind of like I was on a cruise, honestly, but without uh, 3,000 people milling around a boat. So it was really nice and no no snorkeling with the rays. But uh, I had a really nice time off. Now I have to remember how to arm and disarm my door. <laughs> um, I'm flying to Tampa today. Um, Julie, one of my favorite coworkers, Jewelry, she, she, her haircut and her demeanor, she reminds me of a cool mom, like the Partridge family mom, whatever her name was. She's just cool. She's snappy. She's intelligent. She's pretty. She's, I love her. And uh, she was on my trip. And then her name has disappeared from my trip. So I'm a little upset about that. But um, what else I want, what did I want to tell you today? Yeah, the cats are amazing. The cats were very, very good. Buddy especially has been more of a love bug than usual because he's had me every single day for a while. So uh, I think he's been spoiled by my presence. He's going to be very upset with me when I'm gone for three days. So blah, blah, blah. Let me get into the airport, dodge some of these raindrops, and I will see you on the way to Tampa. So TSA obviously missed me because I was random, of course. When I want to get coffee, ugh, I'm, I'm not going to make it. Oh, John Petrus, no line. My savior today. And welcome to Tampa. Let's do a quick room tour and then we'll debrief on this flight. And there is definitely something to say about this last flight. So we've got a little mini fridge here. It's a smart fridge. Um, we've got a safe, no microwave, coffee machine up on top there. Um, over here, nice little bench, which is nice for setting your luggage up there. Two queen size beds. Uh, very nice. I will admit it probably took me five minutes to figure out how to turn the lights on. It always feels like an IQ test. Like, how do you turn the lights on? Or turning the shower on. There's so many bath fixtures you run into. It's like, it feels like an intelligence quiz. Uh, but the beds look very comfortable. Uh, no mystery stains. Very simple, nice, nice furniture. A little view of the pool down there. It's too chilly for the pool, but... Yeah, very nice room. Now, let's get my food unpacked, get settled, and I'll tell you about my trip. Hey guys, how are ya? So, I've been in my room for a couple hours now. Uh, I'm watching a TV show on uh, HGTV called Fixer to Fabulous. It's never fabulous. I've seen the TV show. It's always like, hmm, let's do white quartzite countertops. What about a dark backsplash for contrast? Wow. Hey, what about a larger island? It's always the same show. It's always the same house, but whatever. Uh, here I am watching it. But um, so today's flight, today's flight, we had 64 passengers on board. Our flight left about 1030 this morning. Uh, it was uh, three hours and 41 minutes, I think. We, we got there with a, we got here with a really great tailwind, which was awesome. Um, really no issues, no problems for the first 40 minutes or so. And then I got a call bell and I walked up and uh, there was this young lady who coming on board, I noticed she had a bit of a belly, but um, as a young man, you learn to never assume a woman is pregnant. You never mention anything. I am never, because I've done it twice in my life and both times I was wrong. 
One time she was gracious in her, yes, I know, yes, I look, but um, yeah, I'll never say anything. I'm going to have to see an arm or a leg poking out before I say anything about a baby. Um, but uh, yeah, this young lady, she had a bit of a belly. Turns out she was about a little more than seven months pregnant, which I'm not a doctor, but is it common to fly when you're that pregnant? I can't imagine flying. I'm lactose intolerant. I couldn't fly after a milkshake. Never mind that pregnant, you know, but so she's flying. About 40 minutes in, she rings her call bell and she is having some extraordinary cramps. Very, very strong cramps. Now, I would assume she's having cramps. I mean, the baby is in a pressurized body now with the, you know, the aircraft pressure. And I don't know, I'm not a doctor, but she was experiencing some really significant cramps and they were scaring her because they were really quite painful. Uh, and, um, you know, I don't know anything. I, I've i been trained on how to help someone give birth. I mean, I, I'm, I'm terrified of it actually happening, but I, I'm, I'm confident I would be able to assist. In this situation, I, I honestly, it's like severe cramping. What do I do? How do I, how do I move from here? So, um, and as a guy, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So I, I called for medical personnel on board and I'll tell you, even out of 64 passengers, there's always somebody on board when you need them. So in this case, it was an angel named Christina. She is a Mickey nurse. Is it Mickey? Mickey? Uh, she is a nurse uh, handling, dealing with little babies. She was an EMT and she's done a number of things to be the perfect person to have on board. So she just basically asked, uh, while I was filling out a MedLink form, she was, uh, she was asking the questions I didn't know to ask. Are you bleeding? Is there any uh, discharge? Like, you know, did your... Uh, water break or something. She was asking all those questions I wouldn't know to ask. And um, and the answer was no. I mean, she was fine. Um, the baby was moving and the baby was just twisting and turning and doing all sorts of gymnastics inside her belly. And um, I think I'm, I'm assuming the pressure, but um, within just a, like three or four minutes, maybe five minutes tops, she went from sobbing, crying, and very, very emotional. She couldn't breathe to being fine. She was able to finally take a breath. Now, if you have asthma, I have asthma. I've had asthma attacks that were terrifying because I could not catch my breath. And people would just say, it's okay, just calm down and breathe. F you, I'm trying here, <laughs> you know? Well, it's just seemed the more that we were like, <sighs> breathe. It was just getting her more and more. <gasps> and uh, she finally relaxed. You know, there's a point when you, you know, do you ever cry so hard and you just don't, you think you're never going to stop crying? And then you're like, why am I still crying? And you kind of stop, you know, you peter, you peter off. Well, she was able to take a breath and she was able to calm down. And when she calmed down, the cramping stopped and she was, she was feeling much, much, much better. Uh, and she lay down and took a nap. Uh, so I was talking with the, the passenger and Christina do you think um, we, is there anything we should do in terms of like, you know, med link? Should we call a professional? And uh, by the time we got to that conversation, she was feeling much better and had fallen asleep. So it was, and she uh, did, she did not want paramedics when we landed. She did want a wheelchair because she was just really fatigued and she didn't want to uh, walk through a very long airport. Because the airport here in Tampa is not huge, but you do have to take a tram and then get to pick off, and it's just a mess. So she just wanted a wheelchair. That's all she wanted. So it went from like just cramps and tears to her sleeping peacefully, which is the perfect solution. Because what I really did not want to do today was help someone give birth to a baby. I never want to have to do that. I never want to have to do CPR. And I never want to see a newborn baby on an airplane. Thank you very much. Uh, but um, so we were all set and prepared to, I had been talking with the captain. Uh, I, uh, we never got to the point where we actually had to call MedLink, which is the uh, an emergency room on the ground that we would have contact with. So it all worked out well, but it was um, a very dramatic, I'd say 10 minutes. <laughs> it was, it could have been a lot, but 
it was cramps. Um, I have never had a baby, uh, but like I said, I have lactose intolerance. I couldn't fly after a milkshake, never mind a, a seven months of a baby inside my belly. So all worked out well. The rest of the flight just checked on her every once in a while, made sure she was okay, but she was sleeping the entire time. So it was good. Uh, that, that woman, Christina, she was an absolute angel. But uh, yeah, that was my flight. <laughs> I never want to have to help someone give birth to a baby on an airplane. Never. Uh, but uh, yeah, there we go. That was my flight. So our layover is 35 hours. 35 hours here in Tampa. So tonight I'm going to relax. I'm going to rest. I'm going to probably do at least one module online for recurrent preparation and then hopefully get a nice early uh, night's sleep. I have to make something for dinner. Uh, and then, um, oh, they're doing the reveal of the house. Hold on one sec. Whatever. It's a white room with beige accents. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to do uh, at least one module for recurrent. Uh, get a good night's sleep. Eat something before I go to bed. And then tomorrow, I'm thinking going, of going to Bush Gardens. It's been months since I've been there. Uh, I think my uh, coworker Alex might join me, so that'll be kind of fun. I get six um, guest pa guest tickets uh, with my Platinum membership. This is the last year I'm doing a membership to Bush Gardens because as much as I enjoy it, I don't know how many times I can ride these roller coasters and still be thrilled. Uh, and um, see saving, uh, spending the money is making any sense. So blah, 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 blah. I will talk to you guys later on tonight if anything happens. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow. All right, bye. Hey guys, hi. So I'm in Tampa. You know that means I'm going to Bush Gardens. I'm with my coworker, Connor. Oh. Connor. He's also a gamer, sort of, and playing uh, Skyrim, and he doesn't play Fallout 4, but he's still cool. <sighs> All right, so we're sitting down to eat first before we start riding roller coasters, which is probably not a good idea. But I'm getting a brownie, a cheeseburger, and some french fries. The past few weeks, I've been watching what I eat uh, and um, cutting down my calories, fewer carbs, and it's working. I've lost some weight. But today is going to be a cheat day to a, a degree that is going to be disgusting. So, no judgment. There's alligators, big giant alligators, but look at his little, his hand, his little paw. Oh, poor thing. And we're going to be going on my favorite ride of all time, Montu. We just broke the seal by going on Cheetah Hunt, my favorite, one of my favorite rides, but Montu is my all-time favorite. And it's a very quiet day at the park, so we don't have to get the quick queue, which is... Very nice. After some thrilling rides, we're going to take the Sky Ride, which has been closed for years. Just now reopened. I forget what coaster that's called. Such a G, I think. But uh, there's Shikra over there. Tigress. Remember me telling you about Tigress? I'm not doing that. There's Falcon Flyer, Flying Falcon, something over there. I'm not doing that either. Um, whoop, you can hear people screaming on Cheetah Hunt train stations over there. Little animals down there. So we're on the sky ride. It's a beautiful day. It's probably 70 degrees sunny. Now that's the one I was talking about. This is the Serengeti Flyer. I don't know if anyone remembers me at my last trip here to Bush Gardens, but I went on this ride to see how high they're, they're going. It doesn't look like much on camera, but right about there, you think you're gonna die. And then you go higher, and you think you're gonna die and go to hell, and it just gets worse. Wait, wait, wait. Are they gonna go all the, yeah. You, you almost go over the top. It's terrifying. I wish I could do this in slow motion so you could see their faces. Look, look, wait. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, no, it is horrible. Yeah, no, never ever again. This is kind of exciting. I don't remember what was over here behind this tree, but there was something over here. I forget what it was, but they're building a new attraction. So that'll be exciting. Connor is going on Tigris by himself. 
because I am not, I'm just not, I'm not willing. <laughs> Connor right there has chosen to sit in the front row like a crazy person. And there they go. Goes up a little ways, then backwards. Ah, a lot higher. I'm already stressed. <laughs> oh, and that goes over to a very slow, scary roll. No thank you. And then it's down. Yeah. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Meal number two, brisket and beans. Just what you want to eat before going on a roller coaster. There's an orangutan up there. And hello, cutie pie. Look at the pattern on his ears. Aren't that pretty? It's like little little dots all along his trunk. Her trunk. I think that's a she. I am at one of these little, um, what do they call them? Heat press souvenir or something? I'm getting the elephant. And they make a, a, an injection mold something or other. I forget what they call it. But they're collectible these days. They, they don't have many of these machines left. So I'm going to have... Oh, I can smell it. Ugh. And there it is. Scoop! And can I open them? Look at my little toy! Oh, but it's still warm. Yay! Oh, that's fun. Oh, I'm splurging and getting a hippo too. You've been with me here before. You've seen the hippo. I love the hippo. He's not very active right now and you can hardly see him underwater, but I love the hippo. And I splurged and got, oh, I splurged, you know, I got the elephant, but look at the hippo, and he's purple. Can you see him? He's a purple, a purple hippo. <gasps> I love him. Same waterway, but they actually can't access each other. And believe it or not, so thank you for so So. All right, so back in the hotel room, it is 5.01 in the afternoon. So we got there probably about... 11.30. So we had a really good long day there at Bush Gardens. I am wearing the clothes I bought at Goodwill just yesterday. I think just yesterday. This is that Ralph Lauren shirt with that little teal shirt over it. It's in a good little match. And I threw some um, shorts on, little khaki shorts with my little Echo shoes. I'm not sure if you could see those, but uh, so now I'm going to settle in. Um, I am pretty full from eating at the park, um, but uh, I think I might settle in, play some video games, and then prepare for hopefully a very good early but solid sleep. We have to, I have to wake up at like 4 15 tomorrow morning, so I need to get to bed relatively early. So I will see you tomorrow. I'm continuing my splurge day by having a little ice cream bar while hanging up by the pool area. It's super relaxing. Very nice. I think I'm going to try and pick up a few more Tampa layovers. Not just to go to Bush Gardens because the hotel is just so nice. So hmm. good. Hello guys. How are you? So it is uh, 442 in the morning. Not my idea. I do not want to be awake right now. Um, I took a little melatonin last night to kind of nudge myself to sleep because I was wide awake and I had like eight hours left before I had to wake up. So I took a little melatonin and I get to sleep nice and quick, but I wake up every two hours and I'm like, whoa, what was that? And uh, weird dreams. And uh, yeah, so I got enough sleep. I just don't feel as rested as I would like to, but uh, it's been a good morning. I woke up on time, jumped in the shower, bags were all packed and prepared to go. So I actually have plenty of time to run downstairs and talk to you too. Good morning. Uh, so I've been watching, as you know, I watch and I adore um, Nika over at, um, she has, uh, her channel is A Gal With No Plan. 
Today she's doing a QA and a and have, I haven't finished it. It's like an hour long video. And I don't know how you guys watch my videos when they're that long. I just don't know how. But um, she's doing a QA and a and one of the questions was something like, was there a point that you knew that you couldn't go on the way you were in your addiction? And uh, I sat there in on the edge of my bed watching her talk about her bottom. And uh, man, I'll tell you, every thought, every emotion flooded back. This next anniversary is going to feel very weird to me, you know, because June will be 22 years sober. To, uh, and uh, when she's like talking about that last moment when she knew, I know this is a very heavy topic after yesterday, which is all like roller coasters and stuff. But um, I remember my moment and it was when I went to visit my mother uh, in uh, a psych ward. She had just tried to kill her boyfriend, his son, and then herself, but he got the shotgun away from her, and so she didn't do any damage, but she ended up in a psych ward, and um, my Aunt Elaine told me, like, you need to go visit your mother, and I hadn't talked to her in a very long time, and I went and I saw her, and I saw my mother. I am my mother. I am my mother with more facial hair, okay? Um, I am so much my mother, and um, I hate it, but... Uh, I saw her and I saw my future in her in that little room. Much like uh, Ebenezer Scrooge in A Christmas Carol, he sees the ghost of Christmas future, that tall skeletal figure draped in black with the arms stretched. My alarm just went off saying, get out of the room now, you have 15 minutes for the shuttle so I can finish the story. But I was, uh, you know, I, I saw the ghost of Christmas future, my, the ghost of my future with the bony finger stretching out towards the grave. And I knew immediately that I was my mother and I was doomed. I had no choice. And uh, later on that day, when getting back into Boston, I went and bought an X-Acto knife. And I lay in bed with that X-Acto knife, planning on opening up my wrists because that was the only way. I had tried to get sober so many times. I had struggled for so long and hurt so many people. And uh, and I didn't want to do it anymore. And I knew what was going to happen to me. I was going to become my mother with a shotgun at somebody else. And so, yeah, <laughs> happy stories. But, you know, I talk about this heavy, dramatic topic with levity because I, it's been decades since I have felt that sense of hopelessness and, and um, yeah. And so I talk about it and laugh because it's funny to me. Uh, any, anybody who's really recovered, anybody who's seen their own death in their own hands uh, can, I think, with time, can laugh a little bit at, uh, at the folly of me thinking that death was my solution and the answer. So blah, blah, blah. With that... I have to go to Detroit. <laughs> so I will see you there or at the airport. I'll see you soon. All right. Blah, blah, blah. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. I love this flamingo. This is the uh, Tampa airport. How funny is that? Huge. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ran a passenger over. Um, just met. Was it Corey? Just met Corey. Uh, at the hotel, he's like, "Oh, my my friend's gonna be obsessed with." Is obsessed. With, what's your name? Nancy. Hi, Nancy. <laughs> Did you see his picture? Um, I will see you guys in Detroit, hopefully. Um, right, see you soon. Hey there. Hi. Random in Tampa. Not usually a problem because TSA here is pretty quick and it's, it's a pretty small area, so it's easy to maneuver. But. Um, uh, you know, as a flight attendant, you have the right to kind of jump ahead of the line. Some passengers don't understand, but, and apparently a couple of them didn't understand and, uh, got behind me, but jumped in front of some of my coworkers. And I think, um, Connor's bags got, uh, mixed up with passenger bags, so they pulled his bags for further inspection, which is... It was just a lot. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to wait for Connor and then on to Detroit. Even after almost seven years, I still find it a little thrill to be walking down the jet bridge to an airplane. I just love it.
It was a massage gun that was getting Connor in trouble. They thought that he was going to massage people to death. Yeah, that was the problem. Massage gun. Hey guys, hi. So welcome to Detroit. It's freezing outside, but no surprise, it's winter in Detroit. Um, I was just outside in the jet bridge about to chat with you about our last flight and maintenance comes on board uh, onto the jet bridge and then closes the airplane door, leaving me on the jet bridge. And they're going to close it and keep it closed until they finish changing a tire or something. I'm like, it's like 35 degrees in the jet bridge. Please let me back on the plane. He's like, oh, it's going to be closed for a while. Yeah, you can please let me back on the plane. What are you doing? Uh, but uh, yeah, so our flight here to Detroit was pretty easy. Boarding was the most complicated part. Uh, we had 122 passengers on board. For the most part, everyone was fine. We did have a mom who was not having a great morning. I don't know how people honestly survive having children. I, I can barely survive my cats some days. I love them dearly, but buddy sometimes sometimes buddy is a lot but um this mom came on board the poor thing she's got two kids two toddlers uh neither want to hold anything so she's juggling like 15 blankets and four bags and a, a huge family sized box of cheez it's and a one of those thigh pillows that you wear she, she just had so much stuff and uh she's trying to hold it all i'm trying to help her with bags and she She's handing me one and then she's trying to move forward at the same time and she trips. She's wearing these little flimsy um, rhinestone flip-flops. Flip-flops are not shoes. They're not meant to be worn on airplanes. If there's an emergency and you're wearing flip-flops, I hope you... I, I, it's just not safe to wear flip-flops on an airplane. Well, she tripped and she fell hard. She, was, she didn't even use her hands to stabilize herself because she had her hands so full of stuff. It was, she she was fine. She didn't injure herself and I was pretty much horrified. But the poor thing, she was just so overwhelmed and tired. You could see it in her face. I, again, I don't know how people survive having children, but um, she was fine. They were fine. <laughs> the flight was fine. A uh, little bit of turbulence, nothing crazy. So we're gonna be heading back to uh, Tampa. Uh, we are, we're oversold by four, so it's gonna be a pretty full flight. And I think um, we have about an hour and 20 minutes left before we're gonna start boarding. So most of us are trying to maybe close our eyes and take a little nap. So I think I'm gonna follow suit and just, just relax for a while. So I will see you in Tampa. <sighs> All right, so not to be dramatic, our plane could have blown up today. <gasps> oh, really, really, Detroit, what are you trying to do to me? So, um, we're boarding. Boarding is always chaotic. Boarding is always a mess. Detroit today just wasn't playing. Um, the passengers were fantastic, uh, very patient, um, but we had like five or six passengers who weren't assigned seats. We were oversold by four. I, I don't know why, but passengers got on board without actually having a seat assignments. Like I'd say four people. I was exaggerating with six, but I, a good size handful, too many. Uh, so we had some open seats, but we just didn't know who was sitting where. And it just was, it was just too much. While we're taking care of that, a passenger up in like row 10 or something this this older gentleman's like come here and he's like he's making a square with his hand i don't know what's going on so uh connor goes up and and um meets with the passenger and he comes back with uh what's an ex it's an external battery i'm gonna try and i took a, a photo with my work device because in case i have to write a report i should probably write a report uh, i'm gonna see if i can copy it and send it to my phone so i can include it in this video uh, i don't want to scare anybody but it was an external battery you know we, we all have one we all travel with one but the case of it was cracked the outside edge of it was cracked that's it it was about this thick it was a pretty it was a slim battery in, I'd say, a minute and a half between it getting to my hand and trying to figure out what to do with it, should I hand it to a gate agent, I started recognizing it was getting warm, not good, and it was getting thicker, 
and puffier and thicker. It it ends up looking like a, an ice cream sandwich. Uh, it was it was like this thick by the time that, and I'd say within five, not even five minutes, three, three or four minutes. So I started recognizing it was getting hot and thick. It was like puffing up and it broke the case that it was in. I don't know, as a regular passenger, you may not sound, this doesn't, may not sound dramatic or terrifying, but had this passenger not seen it sitting in the seat in front of him and called it to our attention, something could have happened, something bad could have happened at 38,000 feet. Uh, so I am infinitely grateful. I told this passenger over and over again, thank you, you're my hero. Uh, and he had no really idea, he didn't understand how much trouble he potentially saved us. He really didn't understand. And I tried to make it clear what, what could have happened without scaring anybody, you know. But um, so if you have an external battery, Number one, they never go in your checked luggage. They never go in the, in the, the belly of the aircraft, never. No battery goes on, under there. Uh, you always put it in your checked bag. So in theory, you can keep an eye on it. But if that had gone in the overhead bin, it still could have potentially turned into a nightmare. Uh, but it, it, was, it was something else. So I called the captain to call someone down so I could give this to them uh, and, um, I'm so the story just seems to go on and on. I am not supposed to get off the aircraft when there's passengers on board, unless it's a safety related issue. And in then I'm not supposed to go past really just a couple feet from the aircraft because what happens if there's an evacuation? I have to be there for my passengers, but this battery in theory could have blown up and started burning. So um, I thought this was enough of a safety issue that I stepped off the aircraft. I should probably write a report and I put it by the door um, exiting, that's the exit from the, um, the gate, the jet bridge. Uh, and uh, someone from operations came up and she's picking it up, she's holding it. It's now like this thick. And it's, she has to recognize that it's visible, it's, it's, it's warm to the touch. Uh, and uh, she's like, oh, I'll just bring it to TSA. And she's holding it and she's standing there. And I'm like, I would put that in a cup of water or something before you eat. I'm like, I would do that like now, you know, she just didn't seem to even think it was a, an issue, but she took it away. And that's what I was happy with. I was just get it away from me. Um, we had a, a dozen children on board, really, really well behaved. There was uh, the cleaning crew had their hands full. They definitely needed a very strong vacuum cleaner afterwards. But for the most part, our passengers were just really lovely. Uh, it was the whole boarding process that, that was chaotic. And then you have to throw in this potential for that battery doing something really, really scary. So keep an eye on those, on those external batteries. If you feel that they're getting hot to the touch, or they're disfiguring, if it's swelling, if there's any change in its volume or shape, call a, a flight attendant over and let them know to put this, like I was, I was, I was ready to put it in the toilet and then pour water over it because I had nowhere else to put it, uh, submerge it underwater, blah, blah, blah. But um, yeah, it was, it was a lot and it really freaked me out. Um, yeah, so there was that, that was, uh, so I'm in my hotel room here in Tampa. It's in a less fabulous hotel, but it's fine. Um, tomorrow we go to Chicago. Uh, we have the same report time. We have to take a five o'clock in the morning shuttle to the airport. Uh, so it's from here to Chicago and then from Chicago to Las Vegas. It should be a relatively simple day, but it is the day before I think it's the day before the Super Bowl. I'm, I forget. Uh, but um, so I'm a little anxious about that leg, uh, the final tri uh, leg to Las Vegas, because I just don't want a lot of people pre-partying on the plane. And I, I don't know. So blah, blah, blah. Almost seven minutes of me talking. Aren't you happy? Uh, so I'm going to let you go. I will see you probably tomorrow, because tonight all I'm doing is eating visiting the little boy's room for an extended period of time, and then probably playing some video games and then going to bed. I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. So I can't figure out how to get this picture from my work device uh, to my phone, but 
this is the external battery. Do you see them? How the middle? It just looks like an ice cream sandwich. It it literally broke open the case and expanded it to that wide. It, I mean, I was I was very nervous, but uh, yeah, that's that's what the battery looked like. Terrifying. Good morning, guys. Hi. So it's about four forty-five. I'm gonna head downstairs in a minute to the shuttle. We're gonna fly to Chicago, then Las Vegas, and we'll be done before noon, hopefully, in Las Vegas, if nothing goes wrong. It's go home day, you never know. Um, I had the weirdest dreams last night. So I got in bed about eight o'clock last night. I took some melatonin just because I needed to get to sleep rather than just lay there or lie there. Um, and uh, yeah, so I got to sleep. I had the strangest dream. Two guys, one tall and skinny, one shorter and rounder, like like Laurel and Hardy. But they were in a wartime environment, like Nazi Germany or something weird. I don't know. But they were they were um, leaving because they didn't agree with what was going on. I don't. I really don't remember the story. But they're on a bicycle, and in leaving, they found a baby girl wrapped up in a red scarf. And some kittens, little gray striped kittens. And they didn't want to leave them behind, so they put them on a piece of carpet and dragged it behind the bike like it was a magic carpet. And, and somehow they, the kittens of the baby weren't harmed. I don't know. I mean, cuckoo. I mean, <laughs> very strange dreams. Uh, but uh, yeah, I woke up about 2.30 and just really couldn't get back to sleep. So I just played on my phone with a... A video game and um, yeah here we are it's 4 45 and I'm telling you about my very strange dream so I'm gonna head downstairs hope they have a grab-and-go and I will see you at the airport so we just got on the plane doing our checks I'm checking to see if I have enough ice and I find this in the uh, cubby with the ice and stuff hold on I've never seen this on an airplane I've seen birth control pills on a plane but not this holy water are you holy water yeah what kind of, maybe I should keep it because today could be a lot. Guys, hi. Welcome to Chicago. We had 141 passengers on that plane. Two hours and 37 minutes. I think I have to look at my hand because I wrote it on my palm. Um, easy flight. No drama, no trauma. Really nice passengers. Great kids. Wonderful kids. Um, yeah, just a, a good day. Good day so far all around. This last leg to Chicago we're a little anxious because, you know, there's going to be a ton of people. We're completely full uh, and there's going to be a ton of people who are going to uh, Vegas for the Super Bowl. And um, I just don't need a lot of uh, potential drama on board. So uh, we're going to try and keep it to a minimum today. I will see you back in Las Vegas. Hey guys, look, I'm home. Oh my God, guys, today, today. Um, so, um, welcome back to Las Vegas. Welcome back to my car. Fill in the blank. I'm not quite sure. I still haven't decided. I could continue calling my car Shimi, which is, uh, cat in one uh, of the three main dialects of Tibetan. Um, there was a book that I really enjoyed, a series of books called The Long Earth, where there were multiple Earths, parallel Earths, and there was a robotic cat with a great funny personality and um, whose name was Shimi because it was a Tibetan electronic robot cat. I know, it's that kind of book. Uh, so that's why I called my first car Shimi. I loved the name, I thought it was fun. Uh, I could continue calling my name, my car Shimi. Um, the other two main dialects of Tibetan for the word cat would be Shila, uh, and I don't know if Shida feel, falls off my tongue as much as Shini did. Um, there's also Lala or Lala. Um, that's another Tibetan dialect for cat. Doesn't fall off my tongue. Um, someone said t uh, I should name the car 10 in terms of like the 10 inches, you know, which was so funny when I first got the car. Um, in English, I'm not really so fond of the, the word 10. Uh, but in German, I love the German language. I just, I just think it's fun. Um, I just think it feels good to when you speak German. I used to speak German when I was a kid. I lived in Germany for four years as a as a kid. Um, but uh, I, the number ten in German, 
I remember it sounding like sane. I uh, might Sky Butler, you're gonna have to help me. Was that was that a proper pronunciation of the number ten, sane? Um, but there's a thought. Uh, so yeah, I haven't figured it out yet. But let's talk about today, today, today. Wow. All right. So we had a super early show from Tampa to Chicago. That flight was uh, 121 people, 122 people on board. Uh, super easy, pleasant flight, no drama, no trauma. Um, the second flight of the day, uh, I was a little anxious, I have to admit. I'm not sure if I told you. I was kind of afraid uh, of tonight's flight or today's uh, second leg because we were going from Chicago to Las Vegas. Nothing against Chicago, but... The Super Bowl is happening in just a couple of days, and uh, I was very, very anxious um, about people jumping on board, thinking they were going to pre-party on the airplane. And I was, I was preparing myself to handle all levels of foolishness. Well, nothing happened. It was lovely. Part of it is I was setting myself. I was. Firing on all pistons, jokes, love, respect, uh, little funny one-liners, and um, I set expectations very early before the flight, before the door even closed, letting people know that I love them deeply. I said mostly because you're paying my mortgage. They laugh, um, don't bump, um, and uh, but I said you know we're going to have a great time in Las Vegas. Um, you're going to have a wonderful time there. This is not, um, this ride from Chicago to Vegas is not going to be a party bus, unfortunately. If we have to, if we're doing service and we have to kind of slow you down a little bit, um, you know, because we want you to arrive in Las Vegas prepared to have a nice time, not like foggy, you know, or I didn't want to say drunk, but uh, so if we slow you down or say no, when you want to order a beverage, which is what I was implying, I said, please know we're, we're, we're saying this out of love. We want to make sure that you get there safely. And sometimes I say things, as you know, without planning on saying them, and, and that's most of the time. And I said, kind of like when you talk to God sometimes. Now, I don't believe in him, but he's a handy tool when I want to talk to other people. I said, kind of like when you're asking God for certain things, and sometimes the answer is no. Well, so this time I said, I said, uh, I joked, I said something about, well, not that I'm God, I'm more, more of a Mary than God and, you know, bump, bump. And, um, it was hysterical. It was hysterical, but, um, we just really had a nice time. We had a bunch of really, really nice people on board. This one guy named Josh and his friends, um, really the highlight of the day. Sorry, the car next to me is so loud. My car isn't loud. Um, it's just the car is getting steamy with all of my, my blah, all that. Um, so yeah, great flight. We were full, full, full booked to the gills, as you'd imagine, um, because the Super Bowl is here. But a fantastic flight. Loved my crew. Loved my crew. My, my chaser, Connor, I was lucky enough to have for the whole flight, uh, and Connor is, uh, Connor is very chill, he is uh, very conscious and very aware of passengers' needs, and was, was really good at anticipating people's needs, uh, and um, I really, really was so grateful I had him up in front uh, during this entire trip, so it was a good day. Now, I'm going to stop off at uh, Sprouts and grab something for dinner. I might stop at that Google because it's right there. And I think that's it for this trip. So thank you for joining me. Uh, this has felt like a, a very full experience, this four-day trip. As it's been a lot. Although it's, yeah. So I'm going to stop talking because I'm kind of tired and kind of hungry. So thank you very much once again for joining me. Happy Super Bowl. Oh, my God. Wait. <laughs> <coughs> Oh my God, I just made myself choke. I have to share with you one one thing. I don't know where this stuff comes from. I don't know. But um, the 49ers are playing the Chiefs. 
I don't know where, I didn't know where the 49ers played. I'm not sure, I didn't know where they were from. I knew the Chiefs were from Kansas City, right? But I didn't know, I didn't, I don't know anything about sports. But uh, so I asked my coworker, I said, uh, uh, Colin, where do, where do the 49ers play? And he said San Francisco. And I was like, oh, I think I heard that. Uh, so I went back to Josh and his friends, which were the funniest guys on the plane. And I said, hey, Josh, uh, I said, um, because he's a 49ers fan. And I said, uh, I just found out that the 49ers play out of San Francisco. I said, look, you're my people. I said, we're the same. And he thought that was so fun because he's very straight. Uh, but um, but uh, he thought that was hysterical. His friends just died. Uh, but uh, yeah, that was probably the funniest thing I said on the whole four day trip. So blah, blah, blah. I will talk to you later and uh, you have a great day. Bye, fly safe.